Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 154 of Lost in Translation 1. I'm May. And I'm Jay. And this time we watch Great Fusion, The Power of Friendship. Or The Mighty Love? De Kurudramon's final scream? Scream? I like how the only way you mispronounce love, which is instead of an exclamation point, you said question mark instead. <laughs> it's like you remember, like, oh, I'm, I meant to missay this. Uh, that exclamation mark, question mark. Sure, why not? <laughs> you made an bang. <laughs> And we also watch Regeneration Frustration. That's not what Interrobang sounds like, by the way. Interrobang sounds mm-hmm. like a rhetorical question. No, it sounds like, um... No, it's actually not. It's designed to be like a rhetorical question. Really? I thought it was yeah. just a, a... Sort of like when you're yelling a question, I guess. But okay, No, because then it's, then it's exclamation mark, question mark. That's a different sound. Okay, well, um, you say the next episode, the episode name. The Bond yeah. of X7? The Sublime <laughs> Battle of Gravimon? <laughs> and we also watch Dark Side of the Sun, which makes no sense. Or the final Kingdom? The Shining Son of Bright Land? Why did you also say the comma as a question mark? <laughs> all punctuation is question. Okay, all punctuation is a question. Fair enough. For Digi News this week, first up for Digi News, the Digital Monster X is for pre order. Yay, exciting. I'm excited. It comes out like next year though, which is less exciting. And we got some news that there's going to be a premium Bandai exclusive Black War Greymon Evolving Spirits figure. I, to say? I'm upset that they remember this character exists, but other than that, I, I care not at all. Yeah, okay, fair. And speaking of things that Jay doesn't care about, the Try Chapter 6 dub movie was in theatres like today slash last night in America, so that's pretty cool. I hope no so, one went. Pardon? I hope no one went. Well, Mark from With the Will always goes to see the, the, the movies when I they come out. I hope he was out. in the theatre alone. Yeah, he, he was in the theatre alone. Are you joking? No. Every, every time he's um, sent a, a picture saying, and from the private With the Will theatre, which is obviously a joke. Oh he my says god. He's, he's the only one there. <laughs> This is my, my imagined comedy world come to life. How did I not know this? I thought you. I thought like I told you before, or like you somehow saw on Twitter that he was saying something like that. Okay, so there's a lot of things going on here, right? Assuming that he goes to the same theater every time, yeah. you would think the theater goes, we spent X amount of money to put this in, and we make this amount of money, and it happened five times in a row. And they thought to themselves, you know what? <laughs> Let's do it again. Good point. But, uh, and there was another one of my friends, I believe it's Joe, as in Lonely Distance on Twitter, and I believe he said he was like one of five people in the theatre. I love how unpopular it has become. It's great. No, I think... Burn it down. Well, I know that uh, Mark says it's been like every time he's been the only one in the theatre, basically. Burn it down! Oh. But uh, A.R. Pulver said it was um, a really good dub. Like, it was a really good finish to the dub. I mean, so that's good. if it just accurately translates what they say, then that's fine, I guess. Yeah, well, the other dubs have had issues like um, TK's grandma being a Mokumon, because she speaks Mokumon speak, apparently. And for <laughs> some reason, Sora being Ty's sister at some point. Wait, and what? may never forgive, and may never forgot. When was that?! Oh, um, there's just a line which I think is meant to be directed at Kari, but it's directed at Sora instead, and it says that but it's, it's says it is the little sister. Um, it's weird. Okay. Yeah, that's in chapter two when they're at the onsen. Anyway, so on to Lost News Lightning Mon. I put up a blog post about Madfest, and my next con is PAX, but there's no media pass to that. I'm just going because. I want to go, um, and hopefully if I cover it and they like me, I will get a media pass next time, because in the application they actually said, hey, can you give us an article you've written about PAX before? And I was like, no. I, I can write one, one right now. Yeah. So maybe that'll help me next time. You should write one that just says, PAX is real good. <laughs> PAX. It was in America, and now it's in Australia as well. PAX good as balls, as far as I'm aware. <laughs> PAX. That logo sure is orange, or yellow. Yellow, I think. <laughs> I don't even know which it is. And on to Noctis Synopsis. The first episode they're watching this week is called Great Fusion, The Power of Friendship. Or the mighty love, Decadramon's final scream. What do you think will happen in this episode? Okay, so they. Oh, this is the bit where Taiki and Kiriha are having their big fight to decide who's better, even though Kiriha's dumb and shouldn't be doing this. Um, it would be very much like Frontier to f- show us that like Kiriha was gonna betray Gravimon the whole time, but that is definitely not happening because this 
nothing that could even suggest that. It's just dumb. Anyway, so Decadramon's final... I guess Decadramon is probably going to be the one Digimon who, like, is thinking rationally and being like, hey, so maybe you guys shouldn't be fighting. Because obviously Greymon just believes Kiriha in all circumstances, and so does Skarmory. Mm. Um, I don't know what fusion would be, though. Um, I want to say, like, some kind of fusion between Greymon and Decadramon, because that makes sense. But if he's the protest, then it doesn't. Um, what cross are we up to with Taiki? Is it cross five still? Uh, cross five, and then we had DX. Okay, um, we could have a cross six with Decadramon. That would be really interesting. And by, and by really interesting, I mean it could happen and it would be an event that happened. Mm. Um, ultimately, I think that like Kiriha will appear to be winning, which will make no sense because obviously... Every time Kiryu has tried to do something on his own, he has failed. Then Taiki comes in and does it and wins. Which means that Taiki is just better than him. Yeah. So, I mean, but the narrative arc doesn't work if Kiryu doesn't at least look like he might win. Point being, it's gonna be bad. Okay, so... So, to answer your next like... questions, yep. the most annoying thing will be how Kiryu has a huge, huge idiot... And it's going to be unbearable. And then the episode's going to be bad. It can't not be bad because it's set up on... It's a house built on quicksand. It's not just a house built on sand. That's bad. Quicksand. It was go- It was doomed to fail. Mm. Doomed, I tell you. Right. Doomed. So good episode? I literally just said no. <laughs> okay. And what rating? Two. Death. Filler or not filler? It's not filler, but it's like... You know what? Yeah? It... Hmm. I... It's too significant to be filler, like, as the ideas was happening, but because it's so out of nowhere, I actually want to go, let's go with yes, this is filler, to the extent that at the end of it, it will be as though this never happened. Mm, right, so almost like frontier filler. You like what filler is, yeah. Yeah, fair, fair. Any other predictions for the first episode? I got nothing. Okay, so the second episode they're watching this week is called Regeneration Frustration, or The Bond of Cross Seven, The Sublime Battle with Gravimon. What do you think will happen this episode? I think that they might evolve to Cross Seven. So, it's weird, right? Because they did the regeneration thing with the vampire already. Uh-huh. Is it neo Vamdemon? Yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah. They've already done this. So if they're going to do it like a, every time you hit him, he regenerates, and he's like immortal, so you can't beat him, it looks like it might just be a replay of exactly what happened with the neo Vamdemon, except they're not going to have to sacrifice a whole village of Lotmon to defeat him. That was sad. Rather, you can just have Cross 7 evolve, and that will just do it. Presumably, Cross 7 evolves by shoving Greymon in there. Okay, right. I mean, like, you gotta shove somebody else in there. Right, so what will annoy you in this episode? Um, the, um, you know what? Yeah, if it's, if the fight feels too much like just extra script from the neo Vandermont fight that they've wedged in, yeah, every that, time you hit me, I up. reform. <laughs> Yeah. Your your surprise makes me think, oh no, it's that. I have I didn't even think about it to be honest. Well, that that could be said about a lot of stuff in Digimon. Mm. Like how bad it is. You never think about that. Yeah. And then you see it and you're like, ah, oh, dang. It's that tone of voice. Yeah, no okay, true. Do you think it'll be a good episode? <sighs> No, the kill of Gravimon. I'm not gonna like that because I like Gravimon. Your favorite. So uh, the ideal cross wars ending would be Gravimon just kills all the kids. No, the ideal thing here would be that Gravimon puts Kiriha in a bag and uses him as like a power battery, and then oh. they have to save Kiriha from the bag. But in this in this season, they don't really. The Digimon can sort of be their own generals. Yeah, it's really dumb because now they have their own dark loaders, and I think that's stupid. Oh, I don't think okay. they should have that. Okay. Yeah, no, I know. It, it does sort of seem like not very undigimon. I think only Bagramon should have one. Like, only the big bad guy should have it, because that's how mm. you, like, turn fights. Mm. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, because it was sort of cool when we saw that first uh, darkness loader. It was sort of like, oh man, the bad guys have one too. What? That Didn't really Olegmon cool. have one and just, like, never use it? Uh, no, Olegmon did use it, I think. Maybe once in a minor way i think he crossed he did i don't think he used it one once but i don't think that was really his style yeah, yeah no, it, it wasn't that's the thing like once you have an ultimate that. weapon and it's like i didn't use the ultimate weapon because it's not my style you go well then you shouldn't have had it in the first place yeah so what rating do you think this episode will be like at least it'll be narratively consistent more than the last one and i think that the cross seven transformation will be interesting so a three okay all right okay no, not don't sound hopeful 
It's not, the bottom third of possibilities. Not, not, not too, not too uh, positive nowadays. Oh, yeah. No, I don't like Digimon. Did you know that? Oh, you, you were fine with Save as that modern tamers comparatively. Yeah, it's true. And so filler or not filler? Uh, it's not. It like can't be. <laughs> All right. So the last episode they're watching this week is called Dark Side of the Sun. Or the final kingdom, the shining sun of Brightland. Do you guys know that there is no dark side of the sun? Well, maybe there will be in this one. What do you think will happen? How how could you have a dark side of the sun? No, no, (laughs) answer me this question. Ah, the sun's facing away from us. We don't know if it's dark or not. (laughs) Have you ever been to the other side of the sun, Jayathi? Yes, actually, we go around. We rotate it. We rotate around, don't we? Oh my god. Oh no. Okay, good point. Um, you, you know what? It's really good that no one can throw you under the bus for this because you live under there. The inside, right? No, the light is still coming out of the inside. Mm. Like, it just it just emanates out most obviously when you're outside it. Naruhodo. Okay, that's... Uh, Sumi must excuse me. Um, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Gomen, so, yeah, sorry. What do you think will happen besides physics not existing in Digimon, apparently? Dude, I can't even imagine what this place looks like because it's just... they All they talk about is the sun. But the only thing I can say is they're going to, like, go... They're going to have a conversation like, I can't even imagine what... Which is weird. We've seen the final castle and it's not bright. It's really dark. I believe and gloomy. that's not another kingdom that, that I think that's just the where the Bagrami are hanging out and all the kingdoms on the way to sort of the kingdoms they need to beat because in order to oh wait so is this is Gravimon not the final general uh no the final general is the one in the final kingdom oh okay 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 so it's a different kingdom that's fine um I guess they go to the last kingdom then um it's really I want to because I want to say that like the thing that this kingdom should be is like everyone says it's really bright but then it would look like the vampire land it's all dark but they're not going to it's going to be a weird and shocking like piss ocean land mm. um I, I just don't know it's really bright what does that tell you dark side of the sun I think I, they I wrote that sorry. title and did not think of it I, yeah maybe. I think they're like, yeah, the dark, the moon has a dark side. That's really cool. Yeah, it's not that cool. It's just because the, it's because the moon is tidally locked. The sun is not tidally locked. Uh, so what will annoy you? Um, if Brightland is actually really boring because it's like the last kingdom, right? It's gonna be really interesting, and it sort of has an interesting concept. But I get the feeling it's gonna go nowhere. Mm. That, that's it. Right. So good episode or no? No. Um. All right. So uh, what rating? <laughs> <laughs> like a three. I don't have any faith in this show right now to be like entertaining or good after how they dealt with Kiriha you mm. want to be strong right yeah yes okay. join the bad guys okay okay but that just happens to blondes apparently in Digimon like they just sort of <laughs> hey join the bad the, join the bad guy team um okay one, like that, what you're saying is that one day that's going to happen to you. No, no, I'm not, I'm not like a natural... Though, we don't know if Yamato's not a natural blonde, because in the dub, when he says he's been living a lie, and government says, you're not a natural blonde, so maybe. Well, he's Japanese, isn't he? Yeah. Well? Though, he does have a French grandfather. Okay. As far as I'm aware, blonde is recessive, so it doesn't work that way. Anyway, yes, he's Japanese, I guess, but he's French. Well, good I'm luck. Like, the genetics in anime is a bit different. Eri has pink hair, and I, for some reason, thought that her mum didn't, but, yeah. No, she does. Yeah, she's she super like a does. magenta. Yeah, um, anime physics, I guess. So, filler or not filler? It's not filler. They're going to a new place. It can't be. They had to defeat it. By what? the way, Gravimon's arc was three episodes long. How weird is that? Yeah, well, um... I guess it's a good thing that you're so negative, because I guess if you're negative, then maybe it'll be surprising, right? Good. No, it means I'm going to suffer more. No, I guess on to the show? All right. Question mark? So we're covering episode 43 and 44 as one episode. So episode 43 starts up with a title card, which is a shot of Kiriha and his dad, which is like, I I know, I really like this title card because it's really different from previous title cards. I've always had like a Digimon on it and now has no Digimon on it. I'm a little bit concerned. It's because it's that um, Snapchat. It's like, I showed you my dick, please respond. Oh no. (laughs) No, that's bad. Bad. That's that's what it looks like. No, no, bad. That's bad. (laughs) Anyway, so Shoutmon, because Kiriha is now attacking them asks if Kiriha is under control of somebody again which I'm glad they keep on remembering that Fair time question. that Kiriha was under the control and also they're realizing how completely bonkers this is that he's attacking it's really bad I'm I'm a huge fan of the fact that Kiriha admits that he felt friendship towards Taiki like I don't know I always 
like the way that the rival is written in this series. Like previously... It's written like garbage. What do you mean? No, no, I'm talking about... And I've, I've mentioned this very early on that Kiriha never underestimated or never played down Taiki's strength. Like, and he never like, lied about his feelings towards Taiki. Like, like right now he's just saying, yeah, well, I had, I felt friendship for Taiki, but like I have to distinguish myself as the strongest and I can't do that with yeah. Taiki as my friend. Look, on one hand, yes, but on the other hand, no. In the sense that, like, while he doesn't say, oh, Taiki, you're weak, he never treats him with respect in the sense that he doesn't act differently when he's fighting Taiki in any way. There's no like, okay, I understand you're strong and here's what I'm going to do. There's just a, well, I need to be the strongest, so I guess I'll kill you now. And he's just, it's completely neutral. It's a very bland interaction. There's nothing interesting or special about it. Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you mean. And I'm, I'm now, I've switched from what I was saying last week about how, like, it's fine to have his, like, problems all of a sudden because... While, yes, it has been built up, which is what I said, now I'm thinking about it, like, yeah, he sort of jumped between, like, okay, Taiki's my friend too, and no, I don't like Taiki. And it's very much... You can tell that they have different writers because I feel I looked at the episodes and all the ones that actually had Kiriha acting like himself were the lead writer. Okay, so here's an idea of what the character is and everyone else is collecting a paycheck. Yeah. And then whenever Kiriha did like sort of like a complete 180 and he's all like really friendly, like when he's being like a friendship Sundera, that that's Kiriha, that's his character to me. Yeah. But when he's like actually being like or if he's quiet and he's just there, or in the episodes where he's just friendly towards everyone, like the, those ones are not written by the main writer. And it's kind of like looking back and it's super obvious whenever the writer changes in that way. In other seasons, you can say, oh, t- this time the main writer did it, or this time like another writer did it. You're like you can never sort of really point out which writer has done it until you like look at it. But in, in Cross Wars, I feel like it's been more obvious in that way because but mainly because of the treatment of Kiriha. Like I believe you. And it'd be interesting to look at Shatmon and his behavior and seeing how his beha- behavior fluctuates because I remember I know that him being the king is more in some episodes than in others and I wonder if that has the same sort of trend of main writer says Sh- all Shatmon cares about is being the king. I don't think so. It's never been cuz Kiriha sometimes is interesting, sometimes not. And mm. at some point, very early on, Shatman basically dropped this character trait of actually caring about his final goal, other than to occasionally mention it as lip service. Mm, I mean, I've, he I've, never I've... ever behaves like that's actually his final goal. He behaves yeah. like he's Agumon, and then it just so happens that in the back of his mind, he's also thinking about being the Digimon King in the future. I feel like he has fluctuating amounts of character. Yes. In the I Rate Pirate episode, that, that was good. That was good character. I like that one. Sort of. In the sense that his character was, uh, we're friends, and I care about my friends. And I know that's unique to in like this anime, and has never really been in any other sort of Japan animation before, that, you know, a main character loves their friends. Yeah. So I understand why that would stick out to you, but... To, well, to be fair, like, to be honestly fair here... When, when it comes to Digimon, like, Digimon don't usually have friendships with each other. Like, I can't really name many Digimon who had friendships and relationships at all. Yeah. Like, I mean, um, Itmon and Renamon, you could say, sort of had, like, the... Sort of, like, they talked. Yeah, they had stuff. And they had parts where Itmon's were being like, I don't need friends, I don't need anybody. And Renamon was like, hey, dude, you're being thick. Yes. So, then that was really good. But in other seasons... When have we really had Digimon interacting with each other? So I, I like Cross Wars for the fact that it gives Ballistamon and Shoutmon a friendship and a relationship that is actually more than just like, I fight alongside this guy. You know, they got 10% of a character. That's that's mm. a start. If only it wasn't near the end of the entire show. Can you remember any other Digimon being friends? Oh yeah, like Agumon and, um, and Catmon hang out all the time. Yeah, but that's sort of like their partners, a brother and sister. Like, they don't interact. It's both. They eat together. But they talk. Probably. Everyone hung out with Meikumon because she was the best. Yeah, well, no, Mako was the best. That's true. And I just um, appreciated that and oh, respected I had the Mekumon. Best, I had the best thought about what I want from it, uh, the next Digimon adventure. Yeah? I want Miyako to punch Mako in the face. What? Why? Because Miyako is weird and possessive sometimes and will say, Hey, that's my Jogress partner. I don't, I don't see well, it. Well, because Hikari also, and the Jogress partner with Sylphimon and then Hikari also has the Jogress partner being Odinemon. Ord- I thought Mimi was her Jogress partner. No? 
Did they not drop her Zephyr? Oh, no, that's right, right. Jogress is the other thing. No, she was just like her mentor in that one episode. Yeah, her girlfriend. Yes, which is kind her, of what I thought you were referring totally to. Totally her, go- her sister, not her girlfriend, right? That's how things work. Cousins. Yeah, special cousins. But anyway, wow. So, so yeah, I'm, I, I like Cross Wars because of the actual characters that the Digimon have and the relationships that they have. I don't like Cross Wars because it's boring. You don't like Cross Wars because it's Digimon. It's a lot of things. Mm. So it's really boring. So then Kiraha is having a flashback about his dad. And I want to point out that the dub, for some reason, makes the dad sound like he's dying in what he's saying. So it's, I don't know, it's it's weird that they, because in, in the original, you don't know that he's about to die or that he's dying. And these are his dying words to him. Wait, in, in, the, the, dub, de- in the deathbed? He, no, no, in, there's a flashback. And you don't know he's in the deathbed. It's just his face. Like, you just see his mouth moving. And he just sort of says, hey, you have to be strong, Kiraha. And then the dub, he's like, Kira, you, you have to be, be strong. And he's like all coughing and wheezing. And I just, it's a really weird addition because, I don't know, I feel like, I don't know, it just annoys me because it feels like it almost spoils something. Well, what does get spoiled later this episode is why he's so angry about, like, after his after his dad died. Because mm-hmm. in the Japanese, he's like, uh, people can betray you just like my dad's associates did. And you're like, oh, what does that mean? And then in the English, he goes, just like my dad's associates took all took the company over from him after he died and then, like, took everything from us. Mm. I'm like, oh, okay. So that's what happened before yeah. the Japanese tells us. Yeah. Like, I feel like it means more when they don't make references to these things that we're going to find out in, like, in 10 minutes anyway. It's, but they don't tell you in 10 minutes. Do they even tell you in these episodes that his dad's associates took the companies from him? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, they do, because I've got a note here because I've got something to say about what they do in the dub. But anyway. What? No, that's in the dub they tell you. When did they tell you in the Japanese? In this episode. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, it's like... Because, yeah, in, in the next episode, they're, they're already friends. They have the Great Cross, and they're 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 friends in the next episode. It's this all this is resolved in. This yeah, episode. but when does he say what he's? At what point in your notes, like around what main event, does he um, say what happened? Well, when, he, when he's at the cemetery in both versions. I don't remember that. I have no recollection of that at all. Amazing. But I guess I guess we'll get to that. All so right. Kiriha evolves Metal Greymon, and everyone wants to fight, but Taiki doesn't want to fight. Shoutmon asks Zeke Greymon why he's fighting, and Zeke Greymon says he obeys Kiriha's orders. Shaman gets so mad that he does this really weird face and he evolves. And Taiki says that stopping friends is what friends do. So he's sort of saying, okay, I guess we have to fight because we have to stop them. And sometimes friends have to stop each other. And I like that. I hate that Greymon just goes along with it. He's such an idiot. Well, at least Decadramon doesn't. Yeah, that's true. He's the only voice of reason. Oh, no. Dracomon is screaming from inside the crossloader. True. And uh, th- that's fine. So really the only one that we know that has thought, like, is, is just going along with it is the Greymon, I guess, Cyberdramon, who doesn't really have a personality. I don't know why in my head I thought that Cyberdramon was part Greymon. I thought there was a huh. fusion. I guess I can sort of see that because they're both blue. I think all of Kiriha's dudes are blue, except and, for Decadramon. Yeah, it does, like, I looked it up and I'm like, oh, I was wrong. Um, mm. but, uh, so Omega Shatmon has an attack called Omega the Fusion, which we've never seen before, but I dig it. Yeah, with Omnimon. Yeah, well, Omega Mon slash Omnimon. I isn't it really confusing that that just appeared? Is no one going to ask any questions about? Hey, what the hell was that? Or the fact that he's never done it before? I mean, you could argue that he's so angry he's unlocked a new ability, and it's sort of like remember in Cross Wars, however, not Cross Wars, um, V Tamer. When every so often they'd say, "Hey, we unlocked a new ability." Isn't this the opposite though, where like he wouldn't, he would be hesitating because it's a friend? Yeah, well, I guess Shatmon's so mad that he does not hesitate; he just does the attack. But anyway, so after Omega Shatmon is attacked, he de-evolves to Shatmon, and then when in the dub, when Mikey picks him up to see if he's all right. Uh, Shatmon says, wow, you should, yeah, you should see the other guy. Oh, wait. <laughs> and, and then Greymon, and you're like, oh, so Greymon just wins then, right? Yeah. And then he collapsed. So Shatmon doesn't want to go back into the loader to recover, but Taiki says he has to. And then Kiriha approaches and reloads Cyberdramon and Golemon because Metal Greymon is sort of too injured to fight. Then Decadramon comes out and tells Kiriha not to hurt Taiki and all the others. And Taiki sa- um, he says that Taiki should go on ahead so he can talk to Kiriha alone. And Decadramon says that he chose Kiriha because he had the strongest love. Then Kiriha throws this necklace away, and Decadramon tells him not to just dispose of this love. I'm just waiting for it to get to the bit, the bit I want to talk this like, whole episode about. Okay. So, 
Dekramon says he's being as bad as Bagramon, and then Kiraha orders Cyberdramon and Golemon to attack. And then in the dub, it's sort of Dekramon goes into a bit more detail and says that he has no love, and no, and because he has no love, he's, he can't be a general because there's no there's such thing as a general without love. And I have a few thoughts about this because all the death generals, I don't think that they have love except for like yeah, well, Olegmon. His position would be they're, they're not fit to be generals, are they? Well, yeah. So, and Apollomon, I guess, as well. Apollomon is my best friend, and I will fight for him. You mean Leomon, number 800? No, he's not actually Leomon. Look at him. He's a Leomon. He's, he's a lion. That's like saying yeah, that uh, yeah. Dokumon's ultimate form is a lion. It's like saying that that other guy who was a Leomon that wasn't a, named Leomon in, like, last season, I think. Which, no, no, there was Mad Leomon, and he was definitely a Leomon. No, that was this season. And, sorry, last season as in Series. last season of Cross Wars. Man, I don't remember... Oh, there is Panjamon, but the dub just calls him Snow Leomon, so... Yeah, whatever. no, that's that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. You can't say you got corrected in the English. No, but Panjamon is actually just a white Leomon. They look exactly the yeah, same. Yeah, but his name's not Leomon, and so this guy may as well be called Apollyomon. Okay, fine, he's Apollyomon. Um, also, I'd like to point out that we saw his child form, and it's um, Coronamon, who was in the Sweet episode, and he was also on Olegmon's ship. He was the fire one. I don't know what you're talking about. He's a small and I love him. Who is? Um, his name is Coronamon. Not like the beer, like the... It's the corona. same It's the same word, actually. Yeah. Anyway, so Dracomon is yelling at Kiriha through his crossloader and Metal Greymon's also there, but he's sort of like, just sort of sulking a bit. Dekodramon is dying and Cutemon runs along and says that the wounds are too deep to heal completely. In the dub, there are just too many to heal quickly. No, in the dub he says, you can't, uh, these are not wounds you can heal from the outside. And it's like, oh wow, that's really, no, no, I was really heavy handed. I was talking about what uh, Cutemon says. Yeah, well I was saying the thing that yeah. happens in the next sentence. Yeah. Then Kiriha basically tries to kill Taiki with Cyberdramon, like actually like gets him to launch a missile hook stick thing at him and Kiraha says that friends only betray each other then Nene recalls the words that were given to her by Kiraha like in the first part and it's about how becoming strong to heal pain in the dub it's strength can conquer sadness then Dekujamon shows them the past and I realized that oh my god this is just the ultimate clash again Okay, it's so different here's... in a way that it's a different past, obviously, but it is weird that they are fighting to the death and all of a sudden another force camp comes in and says, hey, but wait, I'm going to send you away to like a glowing nowhere place. All right, so this is really important, right? Yep. Okay, so Decadron apparently has the power to A, see into your heart. We knew the, that. No, the but... dub explains. the dub explains it b- with one line because this, yes, it? it makes no sense that he all of a sudden has this power. Yeah. But in the dub, he says, yes, I have this power because I'm a guardian. No, no, I caught that. That doesn't matter. Yeah. What I'm saying is it's taken this long for them to show that, A, he has psychic powers to lift objects with his mind, and then he can project images into the minds of others. Yeah. So he could always have communicated this. He could yes. always have shown them, hey, this is what's going on in all of your hearts, and connect everyone on a personal level so they all get each other and they all understand each other. Oh, no, but it instead, is a problem. But I'm just saying that the dub tries to fix it by saying by by just putting in a line, and I think that's actually what the dub should do. That if the dub sees a problem with something that doesn't make sense, I feel like in, because this guy has no mouth. It's it's not an issue of does he or doesn't he not have the power. It's oh he has this. Why hasn't he never used it before? You know what would have been really good if he can read people's minds. Yeah. Read that little girl's mind to find out if she's an agent of the bad guy. Yeah, but he wasn't in that episode. But he could be. He's in Hiraha's pocket at all times. Nah. It's weird. The crossload has weird rules. Sometimes they can just jump out when it's relevant, like Mervamon did a couple of episodes ago, and sometimes they're just stuck in there and left to scream like Dracomon in this episode. So, that's dumb. And also and Decadramon jumps out too, so they have like, they sometimes can jump out of the crossload and sometimes can't. Big sigh. Um, anyway, so then they go into Kiriha's like, backstory, where his dad was, I guess, kind of harsh on him once, and then after which he immediately dies. Like- also, I just want to point out something. I've been watching My Hero Academia Season 2, yes. and I just got um, the Half and Half guy's backstory. Todoroki, and is he's this great. Not, is this not just what happens to him? Like, the yes. dad's being a little bit too harsh, and the mum says, but he's only 10, or in T- Todoroki's case, he but he's only 5. It's like- basically identical, except that 
Endeavor has an awesome reason to be the way he is. I don't know that part yet. All I know is he's a douchebag. Yeah, no, but like he's he's like, he's a jerk, but he's a jerk with like a reason behind it, and then you can see how that affected his family life and that affected Todoroki as a flow on thing. I'm just waiting for him Could- to be revealed as like the the leader of the League of Villains. He's not. Just I'm going to tell you that now. He's not. Aww. The thing Aww. about My Hero Academia that's really important is that separation of heroes and villains. Like the good guys are good, even if they're jerks, they're good guys. Mm. Like Bakugo, as much as he's like a jerk, is at heart a good guy. He's just a good guy in ways that are uncomfortable for everyone. <laughs> He won the sports festival and was so angry. Spoilers. Jesus. That was it's funny, though. He's very angry. I'm, I'm, I'm super behind in the show. But anyway, this... we'll, we'll stop talking about an anime that Jay likes, because that that's a Patreon milestone we ha- we, we probably will not get to. No, never. Um, okay, so... so... Yeah, he's in the... He's, so, we see Kirihara's crying, and he says that an older kid stole his game, and he's, he's 10 years old, and the bully's 12, so he's, like, saying, oh, an older kid stole the game. And his dad comes up and says, get it back then. And the mum says, but he's only 10. And it's so much just like, oh, it's it's so much like this backstory. Because I, it, I felt it. I was like, I just watched this bit in Digimon when I was watching My Hero. It's just, ah. Uh. Anyway, so Kiriha asks if a crybaby has the strongest love. And Decatramon's like, well, yeah. And we, then we find out that Kiriha's dad is dying and he's on his deathbed. And he says that his mum's already dead. Uh, like, there's no she mention died of the mother screen. in the dub. Pardon? She fully died off screen. Yeah, she's like, well, mummy's mum, already in heaven. I'm like, jeez, this guy's <laughs> having a rough kid. He, this guy's having a rough kid. Rough kid. I was trying to say childhood, <laughs> childhood. but I just said kid instead. <laughs> anyway, so his dad was telling him to be strong because he's dying and that's a reasonable thing to say. And then Kirihara explains he lost everything and the company owned by the father was taken away by the associates. In the dub, it's explicitly mentioned the father's associates took the company from his mother and him. Oh, so she didn't die in the She didn't die in the dub. I mean, that makes sense because you didn't see that, like, she wasn't dying in the hospital. Yeah, and also the dub doesn't mention that the, um... That the mum's already dead. It's like they're trying to make his backstory not as tragic. I don't know. It's it's weird. And then like that's that's it. That explains his entire character. Is that between the ages of like one and eight or whatever he is in this? Like his dad was kind of mean, and then he died. Yeah. And that that's meant to somehow explain Kiriha being like life obsessed with being the strongest person. I guess it's because it he's young. It sort of it sort of like impacts him in that way. It shouldn't have made him betray his friends three times. He's not a good person. No, he's not even a good character. Oh, I mean, yeah, he, he has his moments. So Kirihar explains that he wanted to become stronger, and Taki understands this and the darkness he felt, and this is the darkness that he's felt since he first met him, and then he says that he shouldn't just throw away the love. Meanwhile, Gravimon attacks because they're just presumably just standing there, and Gravimon's just like, hey, look, the, the good guy's standing there. I'm going to attack them. Yeah, so Not- question, why didn't he attack earlier? He knew why- Kirihar was going to go do this. Why doesn't he attack when they evolve to the Great Cross? Like, in the the ten minutes that they're just sort of standing in midair. Well, not ten minutes, I'm, I'm exaggerating. It's like five. I think we've always sort of assumed that... I mean, I know we've confirmed that evolving takes longer, but we've sort of assumed that it doesn't take that long, so it's not really interruptible. I'm still praising uh, the Digimon movie, or rather our war game, for considering having a villain attacking during the evolution scene. Yeah, When yeah. have you seen that since? Never. Like, literally never. Isn't that weird to you? That's weird to me. No. I feel like it's a good idea. Attack when they're evolving. I don't yeah. know. I, I, anyway, I got nothing I've... for you. We've been uh, over this so many times. A war game's still the best thing ever to me, okay? It's not true. That is so not true. It's so Digimon. mediocre. One of, it's one of the best Digimon things. Oh my god, that's not a high bar. It's the best Digimon movie. I'm not even sure if that's true. It definitely is. I don't know. Hurricane Touchdown says the summer memory. No. <laughs> Please tell mum and me. Anyway, so when Gravimon attacks, Decadramon protects them, and Shoutmon tells Kirihard that he has the strength in. The, oh no, not Shoutmon. Uh, Decadramon tells Kirihard that they have the strength in the crossloader, and then his parents speak to him through the necklace for some reason, and it turns out the dad wanted to say, "Once you're strong, you'll have true friends," okay. which doesn't sound like anything his dad would have said. So th- yeah, no, and that's this is my favorite part of the whole episode because it's so. It is. Do we know who who wrote this one? Um. I can check. I don't. Just I don't care keep, enough. Keep, I don't I keep care on talking enough. And I can check. So, 
This is the laziest part of the episode by such a hilarious margin, because we've just established, right, that Decadramon can implant images into people's minds to show them the history. There is no reason to believe that he couldn't make new images like this one, and there is no one else in the vicinity who could have done it, which means that Decadramon made up this scenario to solve Kiriha's emotional problems, and he's just tricking him. It's not like his dad actually said any of this stuff. It's not like his ghost came from beyond the grave to solve all the damage he had caused during Kiriha's childhood. Rather, it's Dekrajuman taking it upon himself to trick Kiriha into just growing up. Okay, so it's not the the lead writer, which is Riku Sanjo. It's Shoji Yonemura, who seems to be writing a lot of the Kiriha episodes. So... If I was the lead writer, I'd be so mad. Yeah, so he's written Vampire Land and the Moonlight Journal, which is... What I think is probably the best <laughs> the episode of the season. The one where it's like, screw you guys, I'm going this way. Haha, <laughs> lol, I actually joined you. Yeah, and um, yeah, and then he wrote the follow-up episode, which is the one where Greymon evolves to Shoutmon DX, where we get the double cross. <laughs> it shouldn't be called double cross. Oh, no, he, no, he, he wrote the episode before this as well. And Riku Sanjo wrote um, the Goldland episodes. Okay. Well, none oh, of these wait, are any good, the, so... The, this list has actually got Shoji N- Yonemura more times, but they've just less left out the U. Oh, uh, so he also did the um, Psych Out in Cyberland, which is the one with the with the Water General and the little girl. I think Kiriha was in character in that one, at least. Right? Look, man, I'm I'm waiting for you to react to my theory about Decadamon emotionally manipulating Kiriha into try- maybe being a better person. Oh, no, I know. I, I can completely see that. Like, I, I never thought of it before, but yeah, yeah you might be right there. Anyway, so Gravimon's attack goes through Decadramon and he dies. He says goodbye and he says that his wounds are beyond treatment, but he's satisfied because he saw Kiriha learning about true love. Decadramon says he can see a new Digicross and he thanks him. And then Gravimon tells Kiriha not to be sad as they'll join him soon, which is terrifying and a pretty baller line. And then all three of them great cross all of their main Digimon to cross seven and they wipe out Gravimon's entire army and then Gravimon's just smiling because he's insane and also he has a core. It's not It's not the entire army, it's just whoever were there, was there with him. Yeah, well, the army that's there. Then when episode 44 starts up, in the dub, we have Gravimon mentioning having not ever heard of this form. Which is a weird addition, but all right. Yeah, he's like really shocked, like, Cross 7! After he laughed at it last episode. Yeah. Cross 7 learns that Gravimon has gravity power, so we know why it's called Gravimon, it's not just a fun name. And we have Gravimon have these really intense screams of pain, and they're kind of horrifying. And then oh. after the fight, because we think Gravimon's dead, Taiki's worried about Kiriha, because Kiriha's blaming himself for Decadramon's death. In the dub, he's Digimon and really trying to convince him that it's not his fault that Decadramon dies. It is when his it, fault. Like, it's 100% his fault. Like, Decadramon would not have been out there if it wasn't for Kiriha deciding he was going to kill everyone. I mean, at least he was convinced by, like, some actual things instead of a tree just saying, hey, you want to you wanna fight him? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. So... Taiki is actually injured from this fight, and then they wonder why the path hasn't changed. And then Nene makes High Vision Monotomon to research why the path hasn't changed, even though they've defeated the Death General. <laughs> Can we talk about how he says it? Hey Vision, it's Hey Vision Monotomon! <laughs> He's so excited! I love the Monotomon. I love all of them. They're my best friends, and I'll die for them. Also, uh, one of the best lines, which actually cracked me up, was when they are uh, when, when, when High Vision Monotomon's like kind of scouting around for information. He says, "Ah, highly suspicious looking door," and he's just in this bush. He's just a bush that's like floating around the castle. I'm like that's pretty highly suspicious yourself, buddy. Uh, in the dub, instead of just saying it's a highly suspicious looking door, he says, "It's so thick my senses can't see inside." I prefer the uh, the Japanese line. My senses can't see inside. <laughs> that line is so bad. Mm-hmm. So there appears to be a cord of Gravimon which still remains, and Gravimon is able to rebuild and he's still alive. And then he explains as long as his core remains, he can still come back. Which is weird that they've shown this vine, because it almost leads you to, I guess it's probably on purpose, that it leads you to suspect that this vine is his, is his core? I his never felt that way. I just, like, I was immediately like, it doesn't make sense for the, the core to be this thing. So the only conclusion I came to was it must be an object in the castle somewhere, which is the same conclusion Nene came to. Mm. Because I'm like, oh, it must be some sort of ritual where you have to bring 
bring this to it. Then he regenerates outside, and it was weird. The whole thing is weird. Yeah. Do not like. Mm. So Gravimon's army takes High Vision Monitor as prisoner, and then when Team Crossheart are planning, Taiki says that they should put our heads together to plan two plates are better than one, and in the dub it's pull the wool out, you mean the rug, and I guess they changed it because putting our heads together as one and not having... And saying two plates are better than one. I think it's because Atama and Osada might sound similar. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that was an extra pun. If it is, I don't get it. I don't know why they didn't keep it in the same in, in the dub, though. Kiraha says that he's, fa- he's grateful that Taiki has still had faith for him and still calls him a friend even when he betrayed him. And Taiki says that it goes without saying. Is it, like, really brutal in the English? Yeah, like, Shatmon says that if Christopher, if, if he was king, he'd make Christopher scrub the toilet. No, 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 it's not that. I'm talking about when he goes, to, okay, Taiki goes, oh, it's okay, you do the same for me. And then Kiraha pauses and goes, uh, uh, ever the optimist. Oh, yeah, you see something like that. Which is sad, because they're, they're friends. That's my biggest change, because, like, it totally undercuts anything he's ever learned. Mm. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, you're right, no, that is weird. Kiraha laughs and blushes and it's cute and everyone's like saying, hey, you can actually laugh and it's, this is, I feel like this has happened in basically every anime I've ever seen with this sort of character. I don't know why. Anyway, so Kiraha is thinking about how he'll, all, all this, like he'll show to Decadramon, like he'll, he'll make sure Decadramon knows that he still has the true heart. How are you going to do that? He's dead. Yeah, he is, he is super dead. Does he not know that? Also, did uh, Digimon die and become Digi-eggs in this one? Because it's not clear. It's not shown. Um, they do become they big die. floaty bits, though. And those floaty bits have got to go somewhere. I think that's just their data, like in Tamers. Yeah, that data goes off and becomes eggs. I don't know. But we haven't actually seen a primary village or something. In we haven't this seen season. an egg. Yeah, we haven't seen it. Usually we've seen, like, the primary village of the show, right? By now. Usually. That'll be in the last part of the series yeah when they want to want to say hey it's okay uh death isn't permanent back when they want to say okay nothing matters monster of the week right ha oh, <laughs> no. can't wait for there to be no story for 20 episodes and davis point point two two point oh Oh, I'll just go shoot myself in the face. Yeah, well, that's what people call him, and people say that he's the worst goal kid, so I'm sorry. To be honest, guns are way scarier to hold than I expected. <laughs> I forgot what it was like. To hold, oh, right, to the, right. I mean, maybe you should be Gundramon, right? Yeah, he's not scared of guns. He is a guns. No one's scared of guns if you're a gun. Anyway, Taiki approaches and digicrosses a bunch of his side Digimon, including Cutemon, to, a, to the adorable thing, which is greatest Cutemon. And I forgot this existed. Like, I told you that, uh, there'd been there were no there was no um cute mon did you cross but I, I was wrong so it turns out he's really strong like we'd never seen this before this digimon but he turns out to be super strong and he just wipes out like a whole bunch of army dudes that are just in she- front of him <laughs> It's really, it's, it's adorable. It's the dumbest fusion ever, though. Oh yeah, it's so dumb, and everyone's sort of like, all the bad guys, are like, is is this, is this cross seven? Like, is this? <laughs> it's, like it's just the, the pigeon. It's the uh, the is this a pigeon meme? Is is this cross seven? It's just cute man screaming. And it's it's the best thing ever. I I'm a big fan of it. Anyway, so. Gravimon says if Taiki loses, he ha- no, if Kiraha loses to gra- him, he has to be a sword in it. No, no, maybe it is Taiki. I can't remember. Why did I write Taiki? I feel like it's Kiraha because Kiraha shows up with... No, yeah, Kiraha, it- sh- Kiraha shows up with Cross 7 and Gravimon says if Taiki loses, he has to be a subordinate and Taiki agrees. Taiki, Taiki is also there on I Cross 7's shoulder. Yeah, but it's mainly Kiraha that agrees, right? No, I'm pretty sure he does say to Taiki. That's in the I, that's in your notes for a reason. I I thought I, am I misremembering? I'm pretty sure it was Kiraha that was. He's there, talking right? to he's talking to Taiki for sure because Kiraha shows up late. It's weird, yeah, right? Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Taiki is there to to generate G cute mon, and then he's already there with Cross Seven. Yeah, you that's think why they'd be doing makes different no, things. it makes no sense for it to be Taiki because I thought it was Kiraha because he was. Cause yeah. Taiki is in two places at once. But I distinctly remember thinking, wait, how is Taiki here too? <laughs> I know, it was like three weeks ago when I watched these episodes, so... Mine was yesterday. Oh, okay, true. Anyway, then we get to see the best part of the episode besides Greatest Cute Mon, and it's Nene cosplaying Wendigo Mon. Yeah, that was really weird. How did she it's arrange best. this? We, well, we know she has cosplay in this series, apparently. She's like, that's really good at it, and they can't tell the difference. Yeah, and it's the same with the when she was Lady Debbie Mon, they couldn't tell the difference then either. Right? Wasn't that, like, way worse, though? Yeah, this one's just sort of like a onesie. It's good. I like it. I dig it. Anyway, 
So, so Greatest Cutemon can't keep the fusion together and Cutemon explodes out of the head and the rest of the fusion just kind of run after him headless, which is weird. Like, it's almost like if a fusion breaks apart, it can just be one part that breaks off. I like to think that this is an attack where he can shoot a big, like, rocket headbutt, but he would never think to actually use it. Oh, okay. No, that makes more sense. It doesn't. I was making that up. Oh, okay. It still makes more sense than they're able to break apart in a fusion, but sometimes they're able to keep the rest of it together, even though we had Shatmon having issues keeping a fusion together, and they all fell apart, not just him. I don't know. It's weird. That's true. So Taiki can't find the core of Gravimon, and then Nene and Kirihara are looking for the core. That's where Kirihara is. So, yeah, Taiki's just showing up in, like, three places at once because he's magic. Gravimon digicrosses himself with his army to darkness mode. They're getting really imaginative with these titles, I can tell. <laughs> Kiriha tells Taiki to let him t- take care of Gravimon, and Gravimon's very fast now. That's what darkness mode is. It's just fast. It should be called fastness mode. Kiriha is now ordering cross seven around, which is kind of interesting because he's, sh- he's like... <laughs> You're really glossing shaman. over fastness mode. What? <laughs> that killed me. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, it's it's a better name than Darkness Mode. I don't understand why if his fighting style is take a billion hits because it doesn't matter, I'm going to regenerate anyway. He just goes, now I'm going to dodge everything. Yeah, with his fast nail. What's his damage? Um, A lot, probably, but it doesn't matter because he can regenerate. Yeah, so why is he doing this? So <laughs> I can't work it out. I'd like to point out that Gravimon grabs Kiriha by the throat. Yeah, he, no, it's not by the... It's, it's around his whole body except his head. And it's the yeah. full attack, and I can't figure out why he doesn't die. Because he's magic, I guess, and it's the plot. I mean, yeah, but he's also by the plot. What? blinded by the plot. So Gravimon says to defeat him, he has to kill Taiki, and it's just destroy in the dub. And we find out that the core is inside Taiki, and that's what the injury was earlier on. And it can't just be ripped out because it's embedded itself in him, despite we see that Gravimon can just pull it out without it actually killing Taiki. So Well, he was lying. Well, he's, he's a bad guy. I don't he think doesn't he tell was. the truth. What, what makes you think that? I don't know. I just trust him. I'm like, Taiki, I'm like, I don't think you're lying. I'm basing this on nothing, but I don't think you're lying. Well, that was a different guy. Yeah, no, but he says it all the time. Ta- Taiki says it to Apollomon, he says it to Olegmon, he says it to everyone. Like, I don't think you're lying. I have He's no a- reason to be like this. He has, um, a, f- he has a faith. Um, but my issue here is if he doesn't like Taiki, and obviously the core can exist outside of him, it's, not, it's only there as a hiding spot. It doesn't need to actually be there. Um, why doesn't he, like, put the core inside Taiki's heart and just kill him? I don't know, maybe because it would also kill him and he also doesn't want to die? It, but it wouldn't. we established that the core doesn't yeah. need to be in Taiki, it's just a hiding spot. Mm. The only reason he would have died if the attack hit Taiki is it would have also hit the core. Mm. If the mm. core just moved into Taiki's heart in, like, a big green rock, Taiki would just die. Why wouldn't he just put it, like, somewhere high up or far away? What, in Taiki's brain? It? Yeah, weird, right? Well, we know that these guys can, like go places like why, why wouldn't you just say hey uh bagra can you hold on to this for me yeah like is there a range issue because it could have just you could have put it like under the ground a kilometer deep and then you would never ever die yeah but they wanted it to be easy accessible and raise some stakes and it is kind of cool the fact that he actually we get an in, an injury in digimon to a human like that's kind of rare so I Kiriha mean, approaches yeah. Taiki and remembers that Taiki was always believing in him, and he says, he, of course he can't just kill Taiki. And then he surrenders to Gravimon, and Gravimon says he's weak. And Kiriha says that he can turn the tables as long as he has Taiki, and then he gives the loader to Gravimon, but Gravimon's not satisfied by this, so he just ends up attacking Kiriha anyway, and Taiki jumps in the way, and Gravimon moves the core out in fear, and everyone attacks it, and Kiriha smashes it. It's a pretty cool scene. He smashes but- it by like gripping it with one hand. And yeah, his regular human hands. But I just want to point something out. Also, like, I mean, just before I get into that, like, arguably you could say that Kiriha is probably stronger than an average, like, young child. Um, I don't wait, see why you old, think that. How old is Kiriha? Wouldn't he only be, like, 12 or 13 or something? Yeah. Does that mean that flashback was only, like, three years ago? Uh, probably. Digimon ages are weird. It's like the whole, um... Well, if it's 13, age. I'd say it's five years ago. I don't think he's 15. I think he's still younger than Toma. I don't know. I, I feel like he is not that old. I feel like they aren't... They're not in high school because they don't have school uniforms. I don't know what year people go into high school nowadays. Pardon? I don't know what year people go into high school nowadays. But, I mean, I will look up his age to see if I can find it. But I'm pretty sure he is, like, at least, like, 12, at, at the very oldest. Yeah, he's in the seventh grade, so he's, like, 12 or 13. Um, yeah, so that flashback, when he's, like, a tiny, tiny baby, that was only two or three years ago. <laughs> 
That's really stupid. Where? He's so small. He's like at least six. He looks like he's well, about you, six. You grow pretty... Yeah, but if he was six, he shouldn't have been like affected this badly. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's like it's like two or three years ago. Three years the absolute most, depending on what part of the seventh grade he's at. That's probably... I don't know. It's just... Mm, that's weird, right? Yes, you are correct. Anyway, Taiki explains that he assumed that the core would leave him if he, Taiki was going to die. And everyone's just like, you're basing that on nothing. Yeah. I think in the English, he's like much more accurate about how, about his guess. Yeah. It's like, I wasn't sure he would, if he hit me, then it would destroy the thing. And this is actually really out of character for Taiki, because we've previously seen Taiki being quite strategic. And this is just not strategic. This is just like, I just assumed. Yeah, but also, it fits in with his I need to help people at all costs Oh, thing. yeah. Okay, no, I, no, okay. I, I retract what I said then. Good, excellent, I win. So the path is open, and Kiraha says for Decadramon to watch over them, but he can't, because he's dead. What do you think of this episode as someone who's near Digimon, or rather both episodes? <sighs> so garbage. Oh, it's just, oh, I hated it so much. Kiriha is so stupid. It's such a gigantic waste of time. Hated it. How did you rate it? it. Um, yeah, like a two and a three was correct. Aww. At least the regeneration thing had like a clever ending. I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming. And that's the only positive of both episodes together. Okay. Also, the way he says, hey, vision, medicine. So what about how it compare to your predictions? It was really close. So take Kiriha fight. Only Decadramon realizes how much of a dumbass Kiriha is being. Then if you use a cross five, the fight stops and they realize, oh yeah, we have priorities, i.e. Gravimon. <laughs> Um, I didn't guess that X7 would be at the end of that episode, but whatever. They fuse X7 and they beat Gravimon, but he has the same narrative arc as Neo Vamdemon, where he regenerates any damage done to him because... Uh, I thought it was because he was made of paper, not that he has a specific core. But he basically does have the same character arc as Neo Vamdemon, where it's, I regenerate, haha, you can do nothing to me. Oh no, you did a clever thing I wasn't expecting. Now I'm dead. Mm. I mean, you also said that you didn't predict that Decadramon would die, at least. Why would I have guessed that? That's a good On point. On what basis? <laughs> That's a that's a good point. I don't know. I just thought I'd bring that up. Just what to shove ma- it in my face. What was your major difference? Um, I I, th- I honestly think when it comes down to it, it's that line where he goes, uh, "I would have done it for you. Uh, you would have done the same for me." And he goes, uh-huh, "Optimistic," <laughs> because it kind of shows that Kiriha learned nothing in the English. Right. And that's important, because if his entire deal is he's meant to have learned, you know, about the value of friendship, and what he learned was, eh, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have helped you, then he's learned nothing. I mean, my, um, my main difference was the fact that the mother doesn't die in the dub. Yeah, but I don't actually think that narratively makes a difference. Ultimately, yeah, I don't think that has an effect. Out. I understand yeah. you. I get that. Mm. It definitely st- stuck out. But I mean, when I think of what's the ultimate, the biggest difference, I mean the one that like changes the narrative arc. Yeah, okay. No, I, I see what you mean. But I can't just have the same difference as you, right? You're allowed if it's the biggest. Mm, okay, but it's okay. I'm, st- I'm keeping mine the same then. Episode 45 starts up with them being in Brightland now, which is the seventh and last. So once they pass through here, they'll get to the demon's nest, and that's where Bagramon is. And then we see, like, the saddest thing, and we get proof that somebody in the cast hates Lotmon, because the Chureimon, which is Lotmon's adult form, are just in iron spikes. It's really sad. They're so yeah. cute. They have three horns. Yeah, they're very cute. I love them. So this is, like, the good version of Wendigomon, basically. I will take your word for it. Uh, in the dub, Shoutmon calls the Dark General, and I'm not sure if I misheard this, but I don't think I did, a Dork General. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. For no reason. Like, he doesn't even know anything about him. He's just, I will get this dork general. Like, dude, they've all been called dark generals. Why are we calling them dork generals now? I would. If I had thought Mars- about it, I'd call them dork generals all day. And Marsmon shows up, which I have big feelings about, because this is Bearmon's ultimate level, and that was in Digimon World 2003. And it shows up with Sethmon, which is Vmon with the Digimental of Love. Notice how it's just evil-looking uh, Holsemon. I hate that it has the love symbol on its face. Like, the audience wouldn't know Digimon well enough to spot that. Well, yeah, we already had Sethmon's design, like, ages ago, but this is its first appearance in the anime, I believe. They're talking about how Polemon, who's the Death General, is the, the god, and then how they don't, how Crossheart don't deserve to see a god. So they start attacking, and Marsmon notes that they're adept at fighting and skilled, so maybe Apollomon is looking for this power. 
Sethmon requests for the power to Digicross and he becomes Sethmon Wild Mode, which, by the way, is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life, besides the Digicross with Crusadermon that we saw. Yeah, with its big dog fists. Yeah. Dog fists, dog fists. Shoutmon and Greymon evolve and then DX and then they break free of the vines and spikes after being stuck in them. And in the dub, it's still so dumb that they call it DX and not D times because it's so inconsistent with the other names. <laughs> D times. So then we find out that Apollomon says that they can meet with him now. And meanwhile, you and Damimon are watching because that's kind of what they do at this point. They just sort of stand there and go, ha, oh, we're evil. So <laughs> Look at me. I'm evil. There are lots of stairs to the top of the tower. And in the dub, we get some added lines and Shoutmon's really sassy. And he's saying, well, you know, there's a new invention called elevators. Maybe you should look into it. And Blistermon kind of calls him out and says, well, he sh- shouldn't really complain. And Shoutmon says how shutting up is good for machine types. <laughs> nice. It's really funny, though. Shoutmon trips and Marsmon says that they fall. They will land in hell. Yeah, it's like suggested that there is something down there. I mean, which... at the end of the episode in the dub, they also say it's the underworld at the end of the episode. But what I don't understand about which it... Which is weird, because the dub, they just say that there's no bottom. There's there's no reference to what's underneath there. But like, what, how do I put this? They, there's a, they make a big point of like, down there is the bad whatever, right? And it has a very mm-hmm. specific look to it. It basically looks like a big well, you know, with the stone walls, etc., when they fall down there at the end of the episode, it's like a matrix hallway made of the green grids that's in like old computer graphics, which implies it's a different place. So anything that they build up in this stairs bit does not carry over emotionally to the ending. You don't go, oh no, they're going down to that place because it's a different place. Right. At least that was my takeaway. No, I, I, um, I, I see what you mean. Well, anyway. good. Yeah, I, no, I see what you mean, exactly. So we find out that this building can't be, and this is very, very convenient, that it can't be accessed with some stairs and you cannot fly to it. So they at least say, well, they can't, couldn't just fly, but it just seems very convenient. And then in addition to what Shatman was saying before, in the dub they have him say, hey, Marsmon, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? In the dub, in the original, just silence, but I just, so the dub's adding some silence, some silence fillers here. We see that Apollomon is just a really buff line and... Apollomon then says that they are magnif- magnificent and he is a Digimon of justice and Shoutmon starts yelling at him. Apollomon tells them to fight by his side to stop Bagramon together and then they can end the destruction that is D5. And then explains how he was forcibly made to be a death general and he has done all these sinful things so he could stay a death general and Taiki says he's not lying. And then in the dub, he says how he's tra- how he's using those vines on the Chiremon to protect them. Like, so it's like keeping them safe, even though I'm pretty sure they're just straight up dying. Uh, but they just sort of want to make it seem less horrible. In the dub, Mikey believes him instead of just saying that he's not lying. Which is sort of like, they sa- sound similar, but one thing's saying, oh, he's not lying, and then I believe him. Like, I don't know, it just... For some reason that seems weird, but one I is, feel like is, believing him is more reasonable than just saying, well, you're not lying. Okay, no, those are, those are the same thing. No, but I mean, I'm just saying that Taiki's saying you're not lying, but you can believe someone who is lying. What? In, so, and so, okay, so in the dub, he's saying, I believe Yeah, but if you, you believe someone who's lying, you think they're not lying. I know, but it's still like... It's the same thing. No, but Taiki is 100% just saying that he's not lying, though. Okay, but it means the same. So what? Hmm. Where's this going? Anyway, so we find out that D5 is <laughs> okay. when the Code Crown is full of negative energy, and we see that Apollomon's injured. Taiki says he wants to talk it over with Nene and, and Kiraha, and Kiraha says he, he has to bring the Code Crown to bring Decadramon back to life. And you know Nene what I love? says, uh, yep. Of being like two thirds of the way through a show and having no idea what the bad guy's motivation is at all. D5, apparently. No, no, that's not. That's his plan, not his motivation. And also, like, does D5 not just sound like a new evolution of Shoutmon? It does. Shoutmon D5 would totally happen. Yeah, I don't think it is. Also, did you notice that they skipped Cross 6? Yes. Yes, I did. I believe he has a design from the manga, but yeah, the anime skip goes... It's like they wanted uh, DX to be Cross 6, but they called it DX because of Double Cross. Yeah, which is dumb, because it shouldn't be called that. But you know, the dub could have easily fixed this by just saying times 6, and then it wouldn't have had to be in DX or D times, which sounds dumb, but they didn't go with it anyway. And then it would have made sense to go to Cross 7, but instead, no, they just kept it. Mm, weirdness. It, actually, it shouldn't even be like X4, it should be 4 times. Every, like... Well, it's four Shout, times in the dub. Shoutmon seven times. 
Yeah, no, yeah, times seven, yeah. And then when he evolves, so, he goes, mon, 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 mon. Yeah, so... See, he shouted mon seven times. Yes. That's the best joke I've ever made. No. Damn anyway, it. so then Nana says that Apollomon helping them does seem useful, but she doesn't really trust him. In the dub, she's more hesitant to say that she doesn't trust him. And Christopher just straight up speaks for her. Like, she, she doesn't trust him either, and she didn't actually say that she doesn't trust him. Apollomon has a red bit that turns blue, and then it seems a shadow of him approaches you. And Me? Me? Yeah, you. So <sighs> Kirahar is fighting Apollomon, and Apollomon says it's okay as long as they'll believe him in the end. Shoutmon makes cross four to stop Greymon, and we're just in fighting again, apparently. We learned nothing from the last episode. Well, Metal how Greymon, could you learn anything? Yeah, Metal Greymon almost kills Taiki by mistake, and Apollomon saves him. And then we see that Apollomon does have wounds, and he says that he self-harms for every Digimon he hurts. Wait, I do not remember him saying that. Yeah, in the original he says... I, I have to hurt myself for every Digimon that I hurt because I hate hurting Digimon, but because I have to do it, I just basically cut myself. Wow, okay. Which I is don't the, remember him saying that. That's dark. The darkest thing that... Like, I know people say that Tamers is really dark. But is that I don't the darkest any, thing in all of Digimon? This is the darkest thing in all of Digimon. Oh my god. Just like, just like, geez, that's really unsettling, actually. Um, obviously, the dub has to keep the wounds, but can't just straight up saying it is self harming because that's actually that is super dark. Like I don't think that it needs oh to be that God, dark. Oh my so dark. Yeah, it's the darkest thing in Digimon. I'm not handling it. Yeah, in the dub, he says that he stopped healing his own battle injuries due to the guilt, and that he'll heal himself once everything is taken care of. That's like um, nonsense. That's he doesn't total have healing. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have healing abilities. They just add this in because. They have yeah. to come up with something. Like, can't just edit out the ban- the bandages and not explain. Please explain. Like, they could have said, oh, it's uh, from Bagramon and the evil because they're evil. Ha ha ha. And, like, it's a, it's a whiff mark or something. Or I wake up like this sometimes. Or I don't know. Just, But, oh, it's so dark. Wow. Kiraha and Nene believe in his pride, but maybe not his justice. In the dub, Christopher says he doesn't believe in everything he says. I'm not sure which things, but whatever. Then Suomon shows up, and Apollomon says that, that they shouldn't be able to be there because he didn't invite them. And you says that Apollomon did invite them, and that he has a dark side he doesn't know about. Hey, it's so, called, yep. speaking of which, do you think that Apollomon ever wonders why his personal flag is bisected into, like, the red and the blue sides? I think he just thinks it looks cool. But, like, did he design that, or was it given to him, and he's like, that's a weird design, I have no blue on me, but okay, fine, let's just <laughs> yeah, pretend yeah, okay. it's real. I didn't realise that, I didn't pick up on that, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Second watch through, I'm like, huh, suspicious. Yeah, that is extremely suspicious. So, we find out that this is called Whispered. In the dub, it's a Polymon Whispered, so it's like a mode instead of just a program. So Makes we, more sense yeah. as a mode. I really dig that the fact that it's actually a program that Bargramon and Dark Knight put in him because that's cool. But in the original, it seems to be more just like a, a part that was implanted in him. And it says that it's in case he turned against them, but it's not really mentioned because it was a program or anything. In the orig- original, it's also said that the program was put inside him because they always knew he was good anyway. So they wanted him to have an evil side. In the dub, it's just like, oh, in case he turns against them, which is weird. Why put it in a Polymon? Did you put this in all of the Dark Generals? Also, why not just have it active at all times? Yep. There's so, no reason to just, if you yeah. can control him, and just, or you can just turn him evil and always on your side, yeah. there's no reason not to do that. Um, also, big fan that we get a Dark Evolution. Always a big fan of the Dark Evolutions. Also, a Polymon Whispered looks sick. It's not a I Dark Evolution. It's not, it's not an evolution. He's just changing Mo-change. mode. Yeah. Then the Dark Apollomon... Evolution is a wrong evolution to the next level. Yeah. So Apollomon begs for Taiki to kill him, and it's the same in the dub, but he says destroy, which still is pretty dark. <laughs> Quickly, my right arm, it's my weak spot. Yeah. I would know I made it that way. Taiki All right, really that's the doesn't... only joke I'm going to make on yeah, that that's subject. Really that's really dark, that's really dark. Taiki says he really doesn't want to, and then they great cross and super evolution, but it doesn't work because Taiki isn't feeling it. 
then that's not Taiki... why he's in a, like an anti-evolution field. Field. I thought no, it's no, it's because, straight up because Taiki's not feeling it because they all look at Taiki and he's like shaking. But there are doesn't... multiple evolution attempts. Yeah, because Taiki doesn't want to kill Apollo Mon. No, but also doesn't Kiriha try? No, they're just trying to great cross. I assumed it was that field that was put around them from the sky. No, that was just them for going into a lift. No, but it's above them when they're at the top. Yeah, I still and think it it's changes a lift. the color of everything. It's like uh, yeah, a field. I think it's, I think it's just a lift. Okay, so why is it more likely that there's a big field for visuals as part of the lift, which is not related to that field at all, versus he's kind of unhappy and that's why he can't evolve? Because, because they, keeping they, in mind, keeping in mind that it's just dead. no, 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 no just last episode, last episode he was fighting Kiriha and it was all about it. I know, but this is different because it's a different episode and it probably has a different writer. But actually, it that's... does. I saw in the last episode, it ha- like when I was looking at the episode list, with it's it has a different writer. That's why. But that's Remember, not... characters change. There's no way. I'm gonna watch it. And I'm gonna like bring up that part right now because it's the end of episode 45, and I'm just gonna look at it with my eyes. That... Okay. Anyway, so Crossheart start dropping towards hell. In the dub, Shatmon says, Underworld, here we come. Which is weird because how does he know that the Underworld's there? Because hell wasn't mentioned before in the dub. And then you make some references to it being a game. So what do you think of this episode as someone who is new to Digimon? I didn't think it was very good. The I liked first, it. The first third was just wasteful fighting and everything. And, oh man, you're right. Only Taiki's isn't going. Yeah. Damn it, I really thought that was related. No, it's just, it's just a lift. I told you. The characters why is, act differently. Why are they surrounded by that colour before the lift even goes? Anyway, you're right, and I'm upset that you're right. Also, in the last episode, what's inconsistent with this episode is that Taiki probably doesn't actually want to fight Kiriha and actually says that he doesn't. Shoutmon evolves on his own accord, uh, which is weird because in this episode Shoutmon won't evolve on his own accord because Taiki's having a bad day yeah I don't know because in previous seasons like you, yes you can't evolve if the 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 evolution battery is having a bad day uh, but it's it's really weird and consistent. I just no, I just realised that just then so what'd you rate the episode if you didn't like it three I gave it an eight I like this episode so bad Um, I, pr- I also find it really really dark the fact that a Polymon just self harms. You know what I would have liked? Yeah. Rather than having the first third being wasted on this stupid fighting for no reason, because as as if a Polymon doesn't recognize humans the moment they get into his land, Especially and also like Taiki, need though. to test them. Oh yeah, the like, only humans that exist, and the ones with crossloaders. What would have set the tone of this episode immediately is they walk through, ready to fight. We just took down this dude. We've got a cross seven with us. Let's go. And Apollo's there and he's like, hi, welcome. Got to talk to you. And it's like really weird and jarring because they're ready to fight. And the generals, it's not like a Legmon who was like, haha, I'm a death general. I'm going to fight. I'm going to still, you can join or I'll kill you. This is like, no, no, like, like, like he is at the top of the tower, but right from the very beginning. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. In because which case, all the other yeah, all the other death generals have recognized them. In which case, Taiki's like "I believe you" thing makes more sense because he's got the evidence of like, well, he was never trying to fight us, rather than well, he tried to fight us, then they were losing, and so now they've tried a different tactic, which is how it appears. Mm, yeah, no, I, I I completely get you there. So, what about comparisons to a predictions of Dr. Synopsis? I said I don't know. They look into the sun, and it's stupid. <laughs> I had no idea what was going to happen, so I, I, I put nothing relevant down. Except that I guess it would be rated 3, and that was correct. That's sad. I'm the smartest. No, no uh, you yeah, so smart. S-M-R-T. So, what was the major difference between the Japanese and the English version? Because mine's <coughs> just straight up a Polymon, like, not self-harming. Also, the sass from Shoutmon, and the fact that Hell is mentioned to be underneath, but they're not mentioned, and they're mentioned, apparently. Um, like... Yeah, I guess. It's probably that. It's the self-harm. I want to say it's that line at the end where Taiki's like, this is all my fault. Because I'm like, it's not really. But it kind of is now. Because in hindsight, it was his fault because they can't evolve because of him only. Whereas I thought it was a field. And I was like, why did he say it was his fault? <laughs> so yeah, it's the mm. self-harm thing for sure. Yeah. So is Kiriha's dad good or too harsh or awful and abusive? Like, it's kind of like... We don't have enough evidence. Like, we've been, we've seen one time. When he was like kind of, kind of gruff with him, 
Like, he never hit him. He, I mean, not saying that that's the line, right? But all, we saw one time where he's like, you have to be kind of strong, kid. And the kid's like, yeah. And then also, that's... Also, he's 10. Like, it's the, the kid's only, like... Tw- like, the age difference is only, like, two years between 10 and 12. So I feel like it... Yeah, just, just get it back. Like, I, that that's slightly more reasonable. But it's just... I don't know. It's, he's still harsh. But I feel like he had a good point. Like, well, you got to fight your own battles, kid. Like... You, I want you to own this corporation one day. But fight your own like, battles. It's not like Thomas' grandma who like hated him personally. But, yeah, which the is dad racist. obviously loved him, and yeah. I think it's like it sends these really mixed signals where Kieran has on one hand like afraid of his dad, but then really sad that his dad is dying. Yeah, and the whole situation seems to be mis- misinterpreted, which is weird because, as I said before, he's he's probably only twelve or thirteen. This was only two or three years ago. I'm not sure how much it could be in- misinterpreted from like time. Time, right? No, it would make a lot more sense. What? Okay, so imagine this, right? You see that original original confrontation and the mom protects him and the dad's all angry. Then the accident happens and the mom dies and the dad doesn't. And the dad, like, spirals into depression talking about how, like, if I was only stronger, I could have saved her. Yeah, and the, the, yeah. And then the kid's like, if I was stronger, I could have saved her. And they, like, have this, the dad becomes really abusive. And then, mm. and the kid obsesses over becoming stronger because maybe he could have saved his mother that way. And that mm. way, like, you can connect his desire to be stronger with emotional trauma that, like, makes sense. Yeah. Rather than it's the legacy his father left him even though they didn't get along. I feel like they couldn't come up with an idea of what the tragic backstory was and I they just realized... came up with it in six seconds. I know, but I think they couldn't. They're a professional team of writers. Are they? Supposedly. Because like they, they do it for charity. And yeah, as, as I mentioned, like it is weird that you can tell when there's a different writer from the main writer or a different writer in general because of how the character seems to swap. Like Kiraha seems to be really weirdly inconsistent with his character. I don't know. It's just strange. It's really annoying. And then he just gets over it again. Like, it's because Decadramon psychic tricked him. Yeah, it's been very up and down between, like, Kiraha being, like, hard and soft. Like, it's a sort of. I know, it feels okay, like. Phrasing. It feels like we, we, we fix Kiraha's problem, and then all of a sudden he has another problem in another episode. I know, it, it is weird. So, there was some Digimon introduced. We have Cross 7. What do you think? I can't, it's, I think the problem with these Digimon is that they're just like, they're big robots with all these details, and I can't remember them because they're not striking in any way. It's they're just, just gold. big it's robots. Just, it's just basically what we've already had before, bit gold this time. What do you think it, of Optimus Prime from the, from the Michael Bay Transformers movies? I don't know, he's a big robot. I don't know, I haven't seen it. Good. <laughs> I know there was dinosaurs in one. I like dinosaurs. Yeah, they're robot dinosaurs, though. Apollomon? Apollomon's, you know what? He's really cool when he's in shade, and then you see him, and he looks a bit dumb. Because he's also, he's a Leomon. And you're like, ah, you're dead. He's doomed. It's cool. I like it. And uh, just blue. What about Lotmon's adult form? It's it's cute. So I don't think it's as good as Lotmon's. Like, it's a huge step down from Lotmon's design, though, because Lotmon's such a great design. Yeah, but it's a good thing in between Lotmon and Antilamon. I'm not sure that's true. It's like a weird... It's obviously, it's just a small Antilamon, but it's not It looks like, interesting. It's like a kid going through a punk phase. Yeah, I don't like it. They've got, like, brass knuckles on. I, I dig it, I dig it. You like all Digimon, though. Digimon's got a lot to like. Yeah, that big orange. Sometimes. The Postman Pat this week... First up, on With the Will, we have one from Chakmon saying, Why the dub made a Lakemon only care about gold, not friendship, is in episode 40 was so bizarre. But even odder, they didn't double down on their change and made it just go away with a Lakemon in episode 41. And yep, that, that was my main complaint. Chakmon says it's very con- inconsistent, especially since a Lakemon's value in friendship made him a unique villain and someone who could identify with Taiki. A Lakemon wanting Taiki's friendship was actually really sweet and a nice angle for the story, but wow, did the dub blow it. I guess they were working episode to episode. And yeah, completely, completely agree. Like, that was my main... I'm still kind of annoyed by it. Like, why why, why would you just take away the main thing that makes a character unique and just make him just want gold and then not double down on that thing? I, know, I have weird. no idea. It's really, really bad. Chakmon then says that how awful is episode 42? We get, we're really getting another Kiraha the Aggressive Lone Wolf episode. Any Kiraha character development that just gets reset and yeah, correct, it does. And Chakmon says they sincerely hope that we find out that Gravimon had a hole in him to make this act this way because otherwise it's just another angry Kiraha episode. Well, guess what? It's not that. That's not the case. But it's not more, all the more radical because we have dozens of marching Wendigo mons. Shurumons, etc. This is why I generally like the first arc better than the second. 
While the whole series is a bit over the top with mar- marching armies and explosions, it goes to an even more absurd level in the Death Journal's arc. Without less interesting mid-level baddies and locals, I miss the Lake Zone. I mean, did you see all the, the mid-air antics of Digicross with Taiki, Nene and Kiraha? Cool, but still, mmm. And yeah, I guess I still like the episode. Um, I really, I mean, the Elegamon episodes were the best part of that, but I, I thought episode 42 was fine. Chakmon continues to say, episode 42 really makes them think that they made all these unlinked standalone mini-story episodes and threw them together in this order after the fact. Kiraha's total change in character from Goldland to Canyonland is still not believable. And again, that it seems that... I agree. This is probably the most obvious it's been that episodes have different writers. It's like... This is, okay, this is legitimately why series have, like, story Bibles, so that everyone can refer back to them and understand yeah. what the characters are and what their arcs are going to be. And it's it just strikes me that this team not only doesn't have it, but no, like, they don't even understand the idea of, like, character mm. consistency or even talking to each other. Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you mean. Like, they don't, see, they don't seem to be communicating in any, in any way because the character inconsistency is just amazing. And then we have one on something called Castbox, and I guess what completely found this by chance because I was seeing if I could add the podcast to Spotify and Google Play podcast, but Google Podcasts still aren't out in Australia, and Spotify has like a Google form that I have to submit to, so I doubt that's ever ever getting anything ever. So I just found this. Uh, so I'm not sure when it was written. Uh, so I'm sorry, this is probably super late. I only just saw this message now. So it's from someone called Microspitter. And they say, you bring up the free movie cards, this is in regards to the movie cards that were given out at the Digimon the Movie premiere. I thought this was a spin-off of the Cars franchise. No. Cards. So yeah, you know you know the, the free movie cards? Microsoft says they okay. think it's funny because they were the last person to show up at the theatre and they missed the Angela Anaconda short, but they were handed the entire stack of remaining Digimon movie cards. It was so cool. I was so Are you cool. serious? Yeah, apparently that's what they say. <laughs> what a, that's amazing. Oh, we showed up at the Pokemon movie and they just handed me 800 Mews. Oh, jeez. But yeah, so I'm not sure when you said that. I hope you are still listening to this podcast. Uh, send us an email if you're still listening to this podcast, because I'm sorry. Uh, tell me how long ago that was that you wrote that. Um, <laughs> it I was never when of... we covered the first movie. <laughs> yeah, that was that was three years ago. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I didn't, I don't even know what, I still don't know what Castbox is. It's just another place that I might have shoved the podcast back in the day. I just get—I was just handing out the RSS feed to whatever podcast listening thing would have me. Uh, so I guess I put it there and someone was like, oh, I'm going to listen to it on CastBox. I'm going to send them a message. Oh, I can't wait till they read this out. And then I'd maybe love to see the metrics of like how many listens we have from CastBox. And it's like four. No, no they're all... Uh, the, the listens all came up uh, or on soundcloud so i should be able to actually select what app is listen- listening to that's um, what i mean like, yeah. or you see Castbox, and it's like exactly the number of episodes we have done <laughs> well we've done more than three i so, know it was an I alternative hope- number i hope you're still listening um i really do i'm sorry um i mean i'm not so why let, let us let us know not by Castbox. i'm probably, probably never going to check that again <laughs> um but the main points that i'm about to say in the outro i'm i'm sorry all right, everybody, this is the next episode of Planet With, the dork side of Brightland. Or Dead or Alive, the Hellish General's Decisive Battle. And the Bottle of the Young Generals. Or Taiki vs. You, Showdown of the Boy Generals. And I'd like to point out that I think Kiriha is also a boy general, so I don't know why they're saying it like, these are the boy generals, these are the two boy generals. No, because he's like a boy lieutenant. A okay. boy tenant. Uh, and Beelzebub's Revenge. Or Beelzebub fade into light. You can't fade into. I guess you, you actually can. You can fade into light. Just it's dumb. You can also slash to light. Slash to life. slash. The link dumps linked in the description, and our red bubbles also linked in the description. And you can get more than just shirts there too. You can contact us and stay updated. You can email us at lostintranslation at gmail dot com, or you can comment on this episode and message on SoundCloud and Castbox. Apparently, that's what I learned today. You can follow us on at Translation on Twitter, where we just got to 700 Twitter followers. And you can find us on Lost in Translation on Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We have a discussion thread on With the Will and a red thread in the Digimon subreddit. And we would appreciate if you would have viewed us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and any other podcast listening app to use. And apparently that includes Castbox. <laughs> uh, Ratings can- really assist people finding out about the podcast. And we also have a website. You can vote in polls, check out our release schedule, and check out our blog posts. 
You can donate to our Patreon, which is linked in the description, for as little as a dollar a month, which gets you access to our listener Slack chat group, but there are high levels with more rewards, such as notes, early episodes, and more. And thank you to our Patreon supporters, Sam Krieger, Stevie, who is Evie Batman on Tumblr and is currently taking commissions there, which in, uh, Joe, Anime Guy, who is Anime Guy Kurosaki and the number one on YouTube, Chakmon, Hiro Lato, who is at Fight Feng Huang on Twitter, Stephen Reeves, who is Wildling64 on AO3, finally, uh, Kaidawashi, Mac, Chisai, who you can follow at Chisai236 on Tumblr, Kyle, the Lady Bugman, who is Anime Blog you can read at bagubaragu.wordpress.com, Litchcoat, Matthew, Anthony, who is at Anto Classic on Twitter, Lizmet, who is Lekman on Tumblr, Quinn, Sithobi, Megan, Kyliek, Neobu, The Time Optimist, Silverhead Freak 25, who's at SHF25 Tweets on Twitter, Nicholas, and Michael C. You can also make one of donation on our PayPal, which is found in the description. It's PayPal, that means I have earned you all. Make sure you're listening to the podcast. I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye! Yeah.